I'm Kurt Anderson, CEO of Fair Anderson and Langerman, and today I'd like to talk with you about a topic that I think is very important to all of us that own our own businesses. And that is the fundamental question of what do we do for our families if something happens to us? Very tough subject. Owning your own business is very rewarding. It gives you independence, gives you authority, uh, can exercise creativity without impediment, but it could be also very nerve-wracking, as we all know as well. Uh, it can be very, very difficult. The business typically depends quite a bit on our talents and our continuing uh, involvement, which is a, an opera threat in the sense that while things are good, it's a great situation to be in. But if something happens to us, whether that's death, disability, or what have you, the question is, can the business continue? Can that business be a source of support for our families, uh, particularly depending upon the stage that your family's at. If you have young children and uh, building a nest egg, so to speak, for college, this period of time can be very, very challenging if you're not around to run the business or if you're unable to run the business uh, because of health issues. And uh, the overall source of income and sustenance for the family is then materially affected. Frequently people say, well, if something happens to me, if I'm uh, if, if I'm uh, run over by a truck or if I uh, have a disability, we'll just sell the business. And I can tell you, I've been involved in buying and selling businesses for over 40 years. Uh, I've done that with clients, I've done it for myself. One thing that always seems to be the case is that the business is always more valuable to the seller than it is to the buyer. It just seems to always be that way. So when you look at your business and you think, well, if something happens to me, we'll just sell it. Um, and there'll be a bundle of money from that. That may or may not necessarily be the case. Depends on the stage of uh, life cycle that your business is in. If it's an early stage of the life cycle, it may be very entrepreneurial, very creative, uh, lots of potential, but it may not have achieved all that potential yet, particularly as it relates to a third party being comfortable to come in and pay a maximum amount to take over the opportunity that you've created. That may not be in the cards. So it's, it's very dangerous to think, well, we'll always just sell the business and everything will be fine. In these situations, it all really does come down to cash, liquidity. You can talk about uh, uh, selling a business and enterprise values and liquidity events and a lot of the uh, terms that you hear from uh, accountants and attorneys looking at disposing of businesses, but the reality is it really comes down to cash cash on hand because if you're not there or if you're disabled and your income is uh, significantly impaired, it really comes down to the cash and how well it can be invested to sustain the family and yourself uh, over the remaining period of time necessary. Typically when we look at these situations, we look at insurance as a means of providing liquidity. And I know insurance is a bad word, there's always a lot of cost issues that seem to be excessive when you're looking at trying to run a business and trying to maintain uh, profitability and minimize costs, particularly in times like this. But if you go back to the idea of what's that business uh, for and how does it relate to your family stability and uh, certainty, then sometimes insurance is an important thing. So as an example, we look at life insurance, obviously, from the standpoint of providing liquidity if something were to happen to you and, uh, and uh, a large bundle of cash could be obtained through life insurance. And it doesn't always have to be whole life insurance with the cost of whole life. It can be uh, term insurance over a certain period of time, five year, 10 year uh, renewable term to try and minimize cost, but provide a bundle of liquidity if in fact something were to happen to you. Disability income insurance is another method of trying to provide some sort of ongoing income source for yourself and your family if something were to happen to you. And I'm not talking about necessarily just the group disability income that you might get uh, through a group policy. You might need to layer on another uh, disability policy as well to provide uh, the extra money that your family's gonna need. And there's a pre-tax, post-tax concept here that's important in terms of how you handle that to maximize the liquidity available from that disability insurance should you choose to, to go down that path for uh, security. There's also another type of disability insurance that people don't necessarily think about. It's called disability buyout insurance. That if the, you're disabled and the company has to replace your services, the company can receive significant uh, insurance proceeds over a period of time 
sort of uh, a uh, disability buyout mechanism where it can use that money to replace you if necessary or to perhaps buy your uh, ownership interest in the uh, company out so that you're provided a significant amount of cash to carry you if you're disabled but you're not uh, deceased, which can be very, very important. In looking at these options, it's very important you sit down and be realistic about what kind of cash would be necessary in the case of a death or a disability to protect your family. There's ongoing annual cash needs for the support of the family and the style to which you've uh, become accustomed, but then there's also the obvious specific needs of college to, uh, educations for children depending upon their ages and other specific large cash requirements that you might have if you're caring for family members, uh, seniors, things of that sort that you want to build into your estimates of what kind of cash and liquidity do I need in the event of a, of a situation where I'm either dead or disabled. With this process you also want to look at a method of taking that cash and creating a structure that preserves it and enhances your family security. Typically this involves trusts and other mechanisms to uh, make sure that the money is invested properly, that it's controlled properly, that your children and your family receive the money they need on an ongoing basis, but perhaps uh, controls are available, uh, their uh, access to the liquidity itself so that it can't uh, be uh, misspent in uh, certain situations. So unfortunately, spending some money on a good lawyer and uh, an overall structure for this, this liquidity that you create is, is an important part of what it takes. And, and I guess finally, this is the, uh, the, the fundamental issue. Immortality is not an option. We don't have that available to us. We own our own businesses because we like being our own boss. We like being in control of our situation. We don't typically like to deal with those questions of what happens if I'm not here. And uh, it's difficult, but it's part of the responsibility. If we're drawn to owning our own business, we like the responsibility and the authority that comes with that in running the business and being able to make our own decisions. Sometimes we also have to force ourselves to take the responsibility to look at those tough situations where we may not be there and making sure that the people we care about are in fact uh, taken care of in that situation. And we have to make some tough decisions about costs that we incur for what we hope is a remote possibility, but it happens. And that's what we try to do is to make sure that our families are taken care of in fact, if, in fact, the unknown does happen. Tough, tough situation, but that's what we are uh, supposed to do when we own our own businesses.